Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring, and the third instalment in a series of tutorial playthroughs for the Stormstrike Warhammer Age of Sigmar starter set. As with the previous two uh, tutorials in this series, I have my beautiful assistant with me, Bella. Hello! And Bella has an audience. That's a, lion. that's a lion. He's going to be cheering on the Stormcast because in this scenario, Bella will be playing the Stormcast. They are over here. Up there, on top of a crypt. And I will be playing the Nighthorns. I have a unit of Glaive Wraiths here. And all the way across the other side, I have a unit of Myamorn Banshees. Um, like I say, this is the third tutorial in the series, and this one introduces the concept of the battle shock phase, which is basically the morale phase that happens at the end of the turn, where you see whether um, your units break and run away. Um, other than that, it, the only other thing it introduces is the concept of terrain. As you can see, the Stormcasts are standing on a crypt. This crypt is two inches high. The way the terrain works in... Age of Sigmar is very straightforward. When you want to climb up something, you have to move up it the distance of its height. So if you've got a movement of five, you could move, and you start here, you could move like two inches along, two inches up, and then one inch across the top. So basically, the vertical height counts towards your movement limit. The exception to this are if you can fly. Both of my units are flyers. If you can fly, you ignore the vertical height. You just measure across because you, you just float up and over and just carry on your merry way. So my Myamon Banshees and my Glaive Wraiths will not be slowed down by this terrain at all, but if um, the unit of Castigators standing on top of the, uh, the crypt decide to get down, they will have to um, climb down two inches. The only other thing of note is that if you are completely on top of or inside of a piece of terrain, you get a save bonus um, when you're being shot at or when you are in hand-to-hand um, -hand combat. It's um, a slightly odd rule, because, but basically standing on top of that hill gives you a save modifier, or standing on top of a, this crypt in this case will give gives you a save modifier. It's a little bit unusual, but that's how um, how the modifiers work in this game. So with that out of the way, that's that's the two new concepts we're going to be going uh, we're going to be dealing with the battle shock phase and terrain. Other than that, it's all the stuff we've done before. There will be a movement phase, a shooting phase, a charge phase. Uh, combat phase and then at the end the battle shock phase and then we swap sides um, and it will be the night haunts that start I now have two units to play with so I can pick which unit I want to move with first I am going to start with my glaive wraiths over here now I'm quite a way out at the moment um, but I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to charge in the charge phase, which means I don't want to run. If I choose to run, um, I roll a d6 and add that value to my movement. My movement, looking at my Glaive Wraith card, you can see my move up here is 6 inches. Um, I could roll a dice and add the, the die roll to that movement, but then I wouldn't be able to charge later on. I want to charge later on because obviously Bella is up on there with her bows and arrows and if I dawdle she's going to shoot me to pieces before I get close. So I am going to use me whippy ruler. And I just get to move a basic six inches, so about there. And I have to maintain unit coherency, which means all of my models have to stay within one inch of at least one other model from the unit. And we go up to the other side of the table. Steven Spielberg, eat your heart out. And then I'm gonna move six. Oh, the Marmon Mar Mar Banshees move eight. Okay, so eight. Banshees are fast, super floaty and fast. So they are actually already at the crypt. Ooh. So that's the uh, the movement phase. So now I do my shooting phase. I do not have a shooting phase because neither the Marmon Banshees nor the Glaive Wraiths have anything to shoot with. So the next thing I will do is the charge phase. The charge phase, I pick a unit, I roll, the, the unit has to be within 12 inches, um, outside of three inches of a unit, and um, you roll 2d6. 
and if you roll enough you get to close in and then you can start stabbing up people with your spiky sticks I'm coming to get you Bells no you're not <laughs> <laughs> there we have it Stormcasts are actually vampires <laughs> so this is for the Glaive Wraiths that is 10. That's easily enough to get them into, into charge range. Um, I might as well roll for the Marmorns while I'm here. And that is a 6 and a 5. That's that's a, a big charge roll again. So both of my units are going to be able to charge into combat with these blokes. So that's what we're going to do. When you charge, you have to end your charge within half an inch of the enemy unit. So that's what I'm going to do now. This guy's going to come here. Do, 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 do. And then all the other guys moving up here as well. Make room. And over here. The Marmon Banshees are doing the same thing. Swish. Swish. Swishity swish, swish. And after the charge phase, top of the crypt looks a little bit like that. And those castigators have got to be a little bit concerned, I would say. Having completed the charge phase, we move into the combat phase. In the combat phase, it's the only phase in the game where um, anybody in combat gets to, gets to fight. So both yourself and your opponent can actually do things. I get to go first, it's my turn, so I get to pick one unit that is um, in, in a combat situation, activate them, then Bella will get to activate her castigators, and then I will get to activate my other unit. So I need to think carefully about which unit is the most likely to cause some serious damage. Um, my Glaive Wraiths, they get two attacks each, so that'll be eight attacks, hitting on fours, wounding on threes, um, causing one damage per hit. The Myrmoran Banshees only get one attack each, hitting on fours, wounding on threes, but they get minus two rend, which means uh, Bella's armour um, is much weaker, and also each successful hit causes d3 wounds. So I'm going to attack with the Myrmoran first because they have, um, they're a bit killier, um, although I'm rolling less dice to do so. Let's see. So I'm rolling four dice. Well, I should, I should first of all, I, I almost forgot, pile in first. Um, before you actually do any dice rolling, your, your models can move up to three inches. Um, as long as when they do, they end closer to an enemy unit than they were when they started. That's just got, got me all nicely wedged in to start causing some grief. I have my four dice, I am ready to attack, and over on the other side of the table, my opponent trembles with fear. She doesn't want to look. She, she knows what can happen. She knows what can happen when the Marmorn uh, are ready, ready for action. So she's not going to look. Here we come, over to my dice rolling doohickey. My four dice go into my dice pot. I've rolled a five, and a five, and a five, and a three. I needed fours, so that is three hits. Ooh. Um, needing threes to wound. Whoop. That's a six, a four, and a three. So that's three hits. Um, I'm rending minus two which means Bella has minus two on her armor save. What's your armor save normally, Bells? Your armor save is up here on your card. What's it say? Where it says save there. Four plus. So normally you'd be rolling four plus, but because of the rend, you need to roll a six plus for each of these. So, I put, I put this dice tray quite a long way away from the little arms, didn't I? So I'm going to move that over there. So you're looking for sixes. Each six is going to block a hit. Any time today. That is a five, a two, and a one. Um, you're moving, the, you're moving the, 
the crypt. Do you have any abilities that can help you here? Um, no, you don't. You have things that can help you hurt other people, but you do not have anything that can help you in defence. So, I have hit you three times. What do you Yeah, the bad news is, each of those hits causes D3 wounds. So I roll the dice again. And you are very, very lucky there because I've rolled a one. A one means one damage. I've rolled a two. That also means one damage because a one and a two is one damage. A three and a four is two damage. And a five and a six is three damage. So that is one wound, one wound, and two wounds. That's four wounds total. Which is actually still quite bad for you. Because that means two castigators. Uh, go. Three, two, one. Now, why is it two castigators? Because my wounds are two plus. Yeah, that's right, you've got two wounds for each of your characters. So you've got two regular Castigators, this one and this one, and you have a Castigator Prime. Obviously, your Castigator Prime is your best one, and you get to choose how you allocate the wounds. So, you're obviously going to allocate it on the two troops. This one. And this one. Do -do -do -do. And that was a bad combat for you. On the plus side, you now get to retaliate. So, you need to look on your card here. You are rolling two attacks. You are hitting on fours, wounding on fours, and causing one damage. You have to choose which of my units you are going to attack. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. I haven't attacked with the Glaive Wraiths yet you'll get a, ch a chance now to attack first. If you attack the Glaive Wraith, there's a possibility you could kill a couple of them, which means I have less attacks to return on you. If you attack the Mayan one, no matter what happens, I'm still gonna be able to attack you with four Glaive Wraiths. So it's one of those situations where you have to think carefully about the order of combat, the order of precedence, which units are fighting, which units have already fought. The Mayan ones, they're done now, and because they, they're done for the round, you're better off ignoring them and focusing on attacking the Glaive Wraiths instead. Yes, but these guys are stronger. That's right, but... So it's really tricky. But, before these get to act again, you get to attack these, you get to attack, then I get to attack with these, and then it's your turn. And when it's your turn, you get a shooting round with your bow and arrow, mm -hmm. and then you get another hand-to-hand -hand combat round. So, you have a lot of attacks in a row now before I can retaliate again with these Myrmorn but I will get to retaliate with these Glaive Wraiths. So really, you want to I put... I think I'm going to go with these. It makes sense to attack the Glaive Wraiths. So to do that, you need two dice. Here is a dice pot. Here are two dice in the dice pot. I'm going to move over to the always bored, never boring, handy dandy dice rolling doodad. You are looking for threes to hit, threes to wound. One. I have no idea what that was, um, but you got you got one hit out of it. Um, so now you're rolling to wound. Again, you're needing you're needing threes to wound. It is the most surreal dice rolling technique I've I've ever seen, and unfortunately, it didn't work out for you. So, unfortunately, that is a miss. I now get to retaliate with my Nighthorns. I forgot, before you uh, did that, you had, you had the option to, um, to pile in. Did you want to pile in that way? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 does, it's, it doesn't really matter at this point, because I'm, I'm, I'm about to beat you up. So I'm going to pile in with my Nighthorns. We're going to go in here. Go around here. We're all going to get stuck in. So, as all my night haunts, I am rolling a lot of attacks here. Two attacks per night haunt. And we are hitting on four plus. This is six dice. That is one, two. Um, no, it's four plus, isn't it? So it's one. One and, and 
and no nothing else at all. Um, and then I get two more dice because I need to roll eight dice total. So you go away. That's a five. That's another hit. And another one. Quite a poor attempt from my Glaive Wraiths. We're wounding on threes. That is two wounds. Bella gets an armor save. You're, it's a standard armor save this time. So you're looking for four or more. There was an earthquake and the crypt moved. So four or more. Each four or more will save a wound. You need to save at least one to stay in the fight. If, if, you, fail, if you fail both these dice roll... I'm dead. Yeah. And that is a six and a five. That is a massive save and has kept you in the fight. Well done, Bella. Yay. However, there's now a battle shock phase because the combat phase is over and this is the new, the new situation. The battle shock phase, um, which is one of the things that this tutorial is teaching us, um, is where you test your morale. So you need to look on your card and you need to look at your bravery rating. What's your bravery rating? Seven. So your bravery rating is seven. You're going to roll one dice and you are going to add the number of models from the unit that have been taken out of play, which is? Two. So you roll the dice, you add two. If you roll greater than seven, your unit has broken and you will lose units equal to the difference between your bravery and the number you rolled. So if you rolled nine and your bravery was seven, you would lose two models. I don't have two models. Well, that would be the end of the game for you, wouldn't it? Oh. And you have rolled a three. Three plus two is five. So you are still in the fight. You have passed your battle shock test. Congratulations, Bella. You are still in the fight. And we start a new round of com a new a new round, and now it is your turn. I'm going to go back here, so we can see what's going on at the top of the crypt. And um, we've got a movement phase, which obviously you're not going to worry about because there's nowhere for you to move. There's a little hole there. Yeah, yeah but you, that would then you, you if you moved through that hole and tried to back away, you'd be classed as retreating. If you retreat, you wouldn't be able to shoot. You wouldn't be able to charge. So you don't want to retreat. You're stuck in there. You want to. You want to try and try and do some damage. Um, and the first thing you have to do to do some damage is you get a shooting phase. Even though you're in hand-to-hand -hand combat, you can still shoot at units within three inches. So who are you gonna shoot at? Which one? The glaive wraiths. Yeah. So you're gonna shoot the glaive wraiths. Okay. We need to look at your ranged attack action. You get one attack. Before you do that, you get to use your Castigator's Aetheric Channeling. Now, you get a choice with Aetheric Channeling. You can either um, choose Accuracy, which allows you to re-roll hit rolls of one, um, or you can choose um, to improve your Rend characteristic. However, my Night Haunts... My Night Haunts... Um, ignore rend capabilities, so you don't want to do that. The thing you want to do is improve your your accuracy, so you will be able to reroll hit rolls of one. You get one attack, hitting on a three, wounding on a three. Here's your dice. Here's your pot. We're going over to the dice roller. So I can reroll one. You can reroll the one. So as long as you don't roll a two. You're fine. In fact, um, the leader of this unit is a Castigator Prime. The to hit characteristic of a Castigator Prime's Thunderhead Great Bow is 2 plus instead of 3 plus. Oh, so that being the case, um, if you choose accuracy, re roll hit rolls of 1 for this unit in that shooting phase. If you choose. Okay, so you're fine basically. Um, roll, so roll your dice. You're hitting on a 2 plus and you get a re roll anyway. I'm Well, the the only way it would be a problem is if you rolled a one, and then rolled another one. 
And what have you rolled? It is a three. So that's a hit. So you roll into wounds. Your wound is three plus. You always manage to roll it off there. Oh, and that is a miss. So I don't need to roll for save or anything. We now go to the charge phase. There is no charging because you're already in combat. So we're going to go to the combat phase. You are still within range of Glaive Wraiths, uh, the Glaive Wraiths, and the Maya Moan Banshees. Who are you going to attack? You are. Just get the. You are. The camera wasn't for pointing at you, and you were just pointing at the unit you were going to attack. You're attacking the Glaive Wraiths. Exactly. Right. So, you get two attacks. Um, there's no piling in, because you're already piled in. You get two attacks. One, two. You are hitting on threes, hitting on fours, wounding on fours. That's a four and a one, so that's one hit. Rolling to wound, needing a four again. Oh, and that is a one, unfortunately. So that is also a miss. I now get to retaliate, and because you've only got one unit on the board, I will get to retaliate with both my units in turn afterwards. Because we can't alter, because everybody only gets to fight once. Basically, you've already fought in this combat round, so I get to attack with my Glaive Wraiths, and then I will get to attack with my Maya Morn. Um, I actually forgot something in the last round. One of the things about Age of Sigma is it's got lots of unit abilities on the cards, and you need to make sure you've checked your unit abilities and you keep, you keep on top of them. Because this would have really helped me. Um, Glaive Wraiths have this ability, the point of death, which says re-roll failed hit rolls for attacks with this unit's hunter glaives if this unit or the target unit charged in the same turn. How many hits did I miss with last turn, Bells? It must have been about six. I must have missed about six hits. I could have re-rolled all of those hits if I'd have paid more attention to my special abilities on my card. I think this game would already have been over. I think I probably would have been able to have overwhelmed you with that. But... <laughs> do, do that again? <laughs> yeah, see, that is, that is what your opponent has the right to do if you forget your unit special abilities in Age of Sigma. So, moral of the story, pay attention to your unit abilities, don't forget them. Because they are really powerful and really useful and you'll regret it later on. So these guys are eligible because they are still within that three inches of this guy. So they can pile in. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go piling, piling, piling and piling and piling and piling. I get to do some attacking. Yeah, I'm going to do some attacking. So my mom one, they had a really good, good, uh, good innings last time. They get four dice. They hit on fours. And I've rolled. A six, a five, a five, and a one. I'm gonna double check my special abilities, make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, they have ethereal, they have spell eaters, which is during the hero phase, which is not applicable here. Um, so that is it. Three hits. Wounding on threes. That's a five and a three. With Rend minus two, Bella, you need to roll sixes. Each six will negate one hit. You basically need to roll double sixes here, otherwise it's going to be bad news bears for you. Drama, 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 drama. Come on, Bells, roll the dice. 
You rolled a four and a one, so you have failed both of those rolls, which means you're going to take a minimum of two wounds. But let's see how many wounds you do take, because each hit is D3 wounds. And I've actually rolled a six and a four. So a six is how many wounds? Three. That's right. And a four is? Two. So that's five wounds total. I have only one target that you can you can allocate them to, which is the poor Castigator Prime. He takes all five wounds. How many wounds does a Castigator Prime have? Two. So. Wah, 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 wah. That is the end of that. That is a very convincing win for the Night Haunts. Um, I would say that two units um, against a single unit uh, of Castigators is a slightly unfair matchup. What do you think, Bells? Definitely unfair. Definitely unfair. Because you've got eight couches and I only got three. That's right. Imagine eight against one. Yes. Eight against one. In a football match. Imagine if you get to win the football match, it would be the worst football match ever. It would be the worst football match ever. So are you saying this was the worst Age of Sigmar game ever? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is the end of the tutorial. Um, I don't think the tutorial is actually intended to be balanced. Um, I, I think it would be very hard pressed for the castigators to win. You would need some good dice rolling. I think the aim is to show, um, well, the battle shock effect the terrain effect and also um having uh, how the order of precedence in the combat works when you've got two units against one unit um, and choosing your targets wisely and things like that um that being the case that is indeed that i think this will probably be the last tutorial that we film um we're going to carry on playing myself and bella because we're going to we're going to play with some more units and i do have soul wars i've got so we've got big armies that we can play with um beyond beyond what this tutorial um this uh, starter set gives us um but i don't think i'm going to film the final tutorial in this box set the reason being, um, it asks you to use all of the models that come in the starter set, and it also asks you to use two hero characters, which you have to purchase separately. And uh, that's because heroes are very important in, in Age of Sigma. It's, this is Hero Hammer, really. Um, and they didn't put any heroes in this starter set, so I would need to... Um, either get those heroes, which I don't have, or use alternative heroes from Soul Wars, and that would um, not really be reflecting what this box set brings to the table, um, because it would be using stuff that, that you don't have in this box set. As the whole purpose of this series was, was just to sort of show you what you can do with the starter set, um, I don't think I'm going to play that final tutorial. If I did play the final tutorial, it would be without heroes, because that would be how anybody buying this box set would be playing it. So um, if people are interested in seeing that fourth tutorial, um, let me know in the comments. Um, otherwise, um, I will see you in another video when I do a roundup and give my final thoughts on this starter set and do like a little a mini review of, of what I think in terms of how it introduces the game and whether I think it's a really good purchase or not. Until then, it's bye bye from me, it is bye bye from. Bye bye! It is bye bye from Bella, and it is bye bye from. Bye bye! The Lion, and it is bye bye from the Night Haunts, and, and it is bye bye from. Bye bye! The Losers. Bye everybody!